Chris Reinhardt, uh, Extension Feedlot Specialist from Kansas State University, and I'm here to talk today about distiller's grains use in High Plains feed yard. What I'd like to start with is a supply and demand issue and, and why we think we're seeing different levels of usage in different uh, regions of the country. When we look at the state of Nebraska, uh, where they currently have roughly 730 million gallon per year capacity of production, if we add to that the potential production that is currently under construction, we're looking at something in the order of 1.4 to 1.5 billion gallons per year. Whereas if we move down to the state of Kansas, we're at something over 200 million gallons per year currently and if we add construction to that we're just over 500 million gallons and then the state of Texas has nothing operational right now but their potential given current construction projects is something around 340 million gallons per year so what does that mean for cattlemen as we look at uh, the production in the state of Nebraska and marketings of something over 5 million head Kansas around 5 million head and Texas just over 6 million head we put that on a pounds of distillers grains available relative per head marketed and the state of Nebraska would have something around 13 Kansas four and a half pounds Texas given future potential production only two and a half pounds of product per head marketed annually so given those facts Currently, we do have 90 to 95 percent of our commercial yards in western Kansas are using some level of ethanol byproduct. Most of that is being used as a natural protein replacement at something between 6 and 10 percent of the dry matter diet. Uh, if the price would warrant an energy replacement, those feed to those same feed yards are restricted to something around 10 to 15 percent of dry matter inclusion, unlike what we'd normally see up in the corn uh, the corn belt where they may feed 30 to 40 percent and I'll talk a little bit about why that is uh, primarily it's due to the foundation of our high plains diet being seen steam flaked corn some data out of Kansas State published this year Matt May uh, his data recommends in a steam flake corn based diet we see a nice boost in daily gain when we feed between 8 and 16 percent distillers grains and we see a nice improvement in feed efficiency but if we get up to 24 30 and 40 percent levels uh, we see that daily gain drop dramatically some data out of the University of Nebraska using corn wet distillers grains similar type phenomenon at 15 percent inclusion we see a nice bump in daily gain whereas the higher levels of 27 and a half to 40 percent we see a dramatic reduction in daily gain and this results in a radical reduction in hot carcass weight especially when we feed the 40 percent corn wet distillers grains in a steam flake corn based diet if we put that on an economic basis just simply looking at the economics of extra or lost carcass weight we see at the 15 percent inclusion level there's an added value of maybe eight uh, eight to nine dollars which means the distillers grains worth is uh, the distillers grains value is something over hundred and twenty percent the value of corn however if we go all the way up to the forty percent level and we lose twenty four pounds of carcass weight uh, that costs about thirty four dollars a head which means the product is only worth about two-thirds the value of corn compared to not feeding any we look at some data out of Kansas State University comparing wet to dry distillers grains and corn based to sorghum based distillers grains we see really no difference between dry and wet product when fed at the 15 percent level but we do see a fairly marked increase in feed conversion meaning the corn probably has more value uh, in a finishing diet based on steam flaked corn some some additional issues beyond just the simple nutritive value uh, in western Kansas and the rest of the high plains is a supply and demand issue particularly for the wet product uh, 15 at the 15 percent inclusion level a 30,000 head feed yard would pull something around 11 loads per day and if we look at a 50 million gallon per year plant that plant produces about 40 to 50 loads per day in other words it doesn't take very many commercial feed yards to pull all of their product and lock that product up other issues revolving use of the wet 
product is the simple fact that feed trucks are uh, limited in the volume and the uh, tonnage of feed they can carry and by increasing the, the moisture content of the diet using wet distillers grains you would dramatically increase the needs for extra loads to be fed to the cattle simply due to poundage and tonnage of feed deliveries. This is going to increase cost of the distiller's grains itself, something in the order of four to five dollars per ton. Another issue is shrink, whereas simply feeding corn out of the bin or the bunker doesn't require a lot of added shrink. We have to shrink the wet distiller's grain, something between four and five percent, which amounts to something on the order of two to three dollars per ton. And then the potential for lost moisture appreciation, whereas commercial feed yards which steam flake corn are able to add something on the order of three to five points of moisture to the dry corn. Now they lose that ability on the 15% of the corn that they've replaced with distiller's grain. So we've got to add possibly $2 per ton for that lost income opportunity. Uh, something that most people don't consider is potential shutdown issues which have become a reality uh, in plants producing wet distillers grains. In diets based on dry rolled corn there is less potential for negative impact on intake and performance whereas diets based on steam flake corn we really ride razor's edge of pH and low pH and the potential for acidosis to pull wet distillers grains out of the diet and, uh, and then try and ratchet it back in on a day in, day out basis is going to dramatically negatively impact intake and performance and it's going to cost us something at the feed yard level. So in brief summary, at the 10 to 15 percent inclusion level, the nu nutritional studies indicate that the value of wet distiller's grains is at least that of corn and probably higher. And in diets based on steam flake corn, if we go up to 30 and 40 percent inclusion, of on a dry matter basis the value of those same distillers grains is something under two-thirds the value of corn. So to summarize first and most obviously we have to consider the basic nutritive value of distillers grains and how they work in the animal replacing corn but then there are also logistical issues involved with the extra weight of feed delivery uh, potential shutdown issues as well as some other nutritive interactions and all of these affect the pricing value that the feed yard places on the product, FOB the feed yard. Thank you for your time.